it is important we understand that mediocrity is something that can destroy businesses. So if you don't understand the cost of mediocrity, the cost of being a mediocre, what you stand to lose, what can happen to you, because you're a mediocre in whatever field you are, if you don't understand that, you will struggle. You cannot succeed. And you'll be wondering why things are not going, going well for you. You don't know that your problems are basically coming from just your, your, your mental makeup, which has positioned you as a mediocre, right? So we are looking at the cost of mediocrity. And that um, is something really, really, really important if we need to grow a successful business. Okay, so we need to go right in. Let's understand what we stand to lose by operating at the level of a mediocre, right? So the cost of mediocrity, unlocking your full potentials. For you to unlock your full potentials, you must do away with a mediocre life. You must do away with a mediocre lifestyle. And I will tell you how to go about everything step by step. It's going to be in-depth. So take notes because what I want to give you today will transform everything for you, right? So take as much notes as you can. Who is a mediocre? What does it mean if someone is a mediocre? A mediocre is not very good. It's a person that is not very good at something or not very good at anything in particular or something that is not very good. That's a mediocre. A mediocre is somebody who is not good at anything. That's who a mediocre is. You're not good at what you do. You're not good in your business, at doing your business. You're not good at doing your job. You're not good at being lazy. You're not good at good at being hardworking. You're not good at being stupid. You're not good at not being stupid. A mediocre is just somebody who is average at anything. Now, you might not be a mediocre at everything, but you might be a mediocre at some core stuff that is designed to give you the kind of life that you expect and you want for yourself. So having said that, we need to understand the cost of mediocrity, the cost of being a mediocre, how it impacts your life. So in today's session, we will explore the concept of mediocrity, which refers to the state of average or ordinary performance that hinders personal and professional growth. So we're going to be looking at that. We will delve into the consequences of mediocrity and its impact on individuals and organizations. So I want us to pay attention because we're going to be talking about quite a lot today. It is crucial to recognize the true cost of mediocrity. The truth is that many people settle for average or comfortable levels of performance, which hinders their ability to reach their full potential. I cannot go and come and kill myself. That's what they tell, they tell you. I cannot go and come and kill myself. And this is me. I cannot do anything more than this. Mediocrity often leads to missed opportunities, limited growth, and unfulfilled aspirations. Oh, you want to live the good life. You want to enjoy life. You want to have the good things of life. And yet you operate at the level of mediocrity. Let us just, for example, for, for instance, let us just assume, for instance, that God was a mediocre. Assume God was a mediocre. What kind of world would you have? What kind of human being will you be? How will the universe look like? Mediocrity is, 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 is sinful. That's why the Bible says, if you are neither hot nor cold in my mouth, I will spew you out. The one, God wants to know that you are either hot in his mouth or cold in his mouth. Not somebody who is not good at anything. Always in the middle. Not, not a professional, just average. It leads to missed opportunities. It leads to limited growth. It leads to unfulfilled dreams. Mediocrity can prevent us from realizing our dreams in our lives. It's going to prevent you from pursuing meaningful goals because you're going to be thinking so small. You won't think big to achieve great things. And it's going to stop you from experiencing a sense of fulfillment and purpose. If you're a mediocre in your activities, in your business, that is the reason why things are, are difficult for you. You are not going all out to be the best there is. It can hinder personal growth. It will hinder our ability to learn and develop new skills and most importantly, mediocrity will erode your self-confidence. It erodes your self-confidence. We need to understand these things because the truth is what brought you to your level of existence today, your level of productivity today, your level of cash flow today cannot take you to where you want to go because most probably you're already operating at your best possible level 
to be at that level. But when you compare to where you want to go, you are operating at a mediocre level. So you need to change. They say they, they, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. For some people right now, you are the top of the food chain. You are the top of the food chain in your mind, in your circle of influence. You are the one-eyed man who is the, who is the king there. But you forget that it's possible to go to higher levels. And because you're a mediocre, you continue to exist at that level because that's where you receive all your praises. Within organizations, a culture of mediocrity can have severe consequences. It stifles innovation, inhibits creativity, and hampers productivity and efficiency. A lack of excellence can result in missed business opportunities, reduced competitiveness, and even the erosion of the organization's reputation. These are some of the things that happen to you on an organization when that organization is thriving on mediocrity or is, is, is surviving on a mediocre workforce. By understanding the cost of mediocrity, we can take proactive steps to break free from its grip and unlock our full potential. Throughout this training, we will explore the root causes of mediocrity, strategies for overcoming it, and the importance of personal accountability and commitment to change. So it's going to be in-depth. And at the end of it, I will give you a few action steps that you can take to become to get rid of mediocrity and begin to become more productive in your business and in your daily life. I encourage you to actively engage in this training. Reflect on your own experiences as we talk and be open to embracing the new perspectives and approaches. The truth is, we are going to give you information. The information you're going to gather here is going to help you a lot. But if you don't go all out to apply it, you will continue to struggle at that same level you have been. Many people go through year after year, year after year, not producing results. You're not producing results not because you don't want to produce results, but you're not producing results because you're already only operating at a mediocre level. And these are the kind of people that continue to say, why me, why me, why me? Success demands you are exceptional at what you do. Success demands you are exceptional. Success will never lower its standards to accommodate you. You must raise your standard to attain success. So together, let's uncover the cost of mediocrity and empower ourselves to pursue excellence, both personally and professionally. So let us first of all understand the consequences of mediocrity. What are the consequences of mediocrity? So um, as an introduction to this concept, we need to understand that mediocrity can have significant negative consequences on both personal and professional aspects of life. So in this section of this program, this training, we will explore the various impacts, various impacts of mediocrity and why it is essential to break free from its grasp. So first of all, we're going to look at mediocrity as it affects limited personal growth and fulfillment, as it causes rather limited personal growth and fulfillment. Right? The first consequence of mediocrity. Hear this. Mediocrity often leads to a lack of personal growth and fulfillment. By settling for average performance, individuals miss out on opportunities to develop a new skill, expand their knowledge, and challenge themselves. So you as a person does not grow. Remember the, the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, according to John Maxwell. The first one called the law of the lead saying that your organization cannot grow beyond the level of effectiveness of the leader. So if a leader is a mediocre leader, what do you expect from the organization? When you settle for less, you see a challenge thrown up at you and you decide not to go for the challenge. Probably you might need to spend some money to do it. And you don't want to push yourself beyond your limits to think out the solution, to raise the money you need to sort out that challenge. Instead, you settle for less you begin to live a life of quiet desperation. You miss certain opportunities. Your skills won't be expanded, you won't be developed. As a result, personal growth becomes stagnant and the sense of fulfillment from reaching one's full potential remains unattained because of the limitation to your growth imposed on you by the presence of mediocrity in your lifestyle, in your life. The second consequence of mediocrity you experience is reduced opportunities for career advancement. Now, in the professional realm, mediocrity can hinder career advancement. Organizations value individuals who consistently strive for excellence, demonstrate exceptional skills, and deliver high-quality work. That's what you find in the workplace. Those settling for mediocrity are often, often overlooked in promotions and opportunities, limiting their professional growth and potential. So you might wonder, why is it? 
that you came into this organization with somebody and that person is doing way better than you and you are still at where you are at the level where you are go and do an examination of conscience go and examine yourself St. Thomas Aquinas said, an unexamined life is not worth living. Probably at the end of today, you want to sit back and take some time to examine yourself, your personal, your, your, who you are, and identify where mediocrity has placed, played a very key role in placing you at the level where you are today. You are called to attend masterclass. As a mediocre, you must come late. You are called to pay for the value you will use in the training. As a mediocre, you will not pay. Or even if you pay, you will be the last or one of the last to pay. You are told to position yourself, dress properly for an event. I said, Medaka is not a big deal. Anyhow, I dress, no problem. Nobody will move my clothes from my body. And you show up like that. You are called to go for trainings. You don't want to go for the training. And you will continue to re up, remain and operate at a very low stage in your life. You have settled for mediocrity. And settling is one of the ways people kill themselves. You limit your growth. You limit your opportunities. And for you to advance in your career, if you are spotted to be a mediocre, you work hard enough not to get fired and long enough to just get paid. You don't go far because you are only operating at a mediocre level. And that consequence of mediocrity is stagnation of skill and skills and knowledge. Mediocre, mediocrity hampers the growth and development of skills and knowledge. By not pushing yourself beyond average performance, individuals miss out on the chance to learn and acquire new competencies. You don't want to push yourself. You just want to continue to operate at the same level. Where I am is okay. I cannot go and come and kill myself. That's your motto. I cannot go and come and kill myself. That's mediocrity at play. You wonder why your business is not growing, why your team is not growing, why you're not producing results. The answer is not far-fetched in any way. It is written in your hearts. It is written in the skies. It is there, visibly written, guy, you are a mediocre. You don't want to advance your skill. You don't attend personal, personal hour of develop, development. You don't. You don't attend cell meeting. You don't attend master class. You don't even attend the Kingsman's Academy. And then you're beginning to wonder what is happening to my business? Why is it that my business is not growing? You are a mediocre. Your skill set is not growing. Stagnation of skills limit the ability to adapt to evolving industry trends, technological advancement, and changing job requirements. A lot is being taught to us in this business. As we advance through the SMO checklist, a lot of people are doing things online, acquiring new skills that they need online to be able to build their businesses online, to be able to interact with people, speak to people, become more competent. Are you doing it? Or are you just sitting down, hoping and wishing for somebody to come into your team and change your business? I'm praying for an ego to come into my team. If only I can get one ego that will come into my team, my business will take off. Guy, your business is not going anywhere. Egos follow egos. If you have an eagle join your team and you are still operating at the level of a chicken, you will kill the eagle. The eagle cannot grow to show its potential. Why? The law of the lead will come into play. You are there stopping the growth of the eagle. And because you don't have the skill set to train them, to work with them, they can't grow. You can't give what you don't have. Name that word non habits. Stagnation of skills limit the ability to adapt. The word there is what? To adapt to the changing industry trends. Every day things are changing. Strategies are changing. Systems are changing. Mindsets are changing. Delivery methods are changing. So what are you doing about it? Consequence number four, decrease motivation and passion for work. When individuals settle for mediocrity, their motivation and passion for their work can diminish over time. I am not producing results. Nobody is joining me. This one happening, one happening. Remember what we said. Your thoughts create your feelings. Your feelings create your actions. Your actions drive your results. Your results for that drive your thoughts, which drives your feelings, which drives your actions, which drives your results. Now, in all of these things, the most efficient place where you break the problem, break the chain, and begin to create new results for yourself is at the level of action. It's at the level of action. When you take action, the action will give you better thoughts, which will lead to better feelings, which will lead to better act um, um, actions again, that will lead to what? Better results. But when you are a mediocre, you won't take action. And when you don't take action, it's going to begin to reduce your results, which will reduce your feelings, reduce your, your activities, and you begin to find yourself go down the drain. And all of a sudden, you're gone. 
the lack of challenge and fulfillment can lead to boredom, complacency, and a general sense of disengagement. This in turn leads to negatively impact, impact, negative impacts, to negatively impact productivity and overall job satisfaction. So you can see these are the reasons why we have challenge thrown up over and over again. We tell you you have to grow through the ranks. These challenges help to keep you motivated and they are meant to raise you out of the position of mediocrity. Let me tell you, the rank on which you are in our business defines your level of mediocrity. When we tell you, you are an emerging active partner, you are a king's man, you are an emerging king's man. So you're an emerging cell leader, you're a cell leader. In other words, we are only defining your level of mediocrity in fancy words. You are, we're, only, we're only giving you your, your mediocrity quotients in fancy words. You can say you're an emerging king's man, very, level, very high level of mediocrity. Imagine, cell, um, imagine active partner, very high level of mediocrity. Then you get to active partner, high level of mediocrity. You get to king's man, mediocre. You get to, to imagine cell leader, working on his mediocrity. We get, you get to um, um, cell leader, um, still working very well on removing mediocrity. Right? Now, I'm not saying that's what it is, but when you are promoted, they are only telling you that in this line of work, you are becoming less and less of a mediocre. That's what they tell you. So by the time you walk through the ranks, guess what is happening to you? You are eroding mediocrity as much as you can so that you can become somebody that can be relied on. Mediocres, the mediocres have a decreased motivation and passion for work because they don't like what they do. They're only operating at an average level. The fifth consequence of mediocrity is it diminishes self-confidence and self-esteem. This one is a very wicked one. Repeatedly accepting mediocrity can erode self-confidence and erode self-esteem. Individuals may begin to doubt their abilities, question their worth, and feel unsatisfied with accomplishments. That's what happens. You begin to ask yourself, why is it that nobody is joining me? I've invited everybody. Nobody is coming into the business. Nobody sent me into my business. People join my business and they leave. They join and they don't stay. Why don't they stay? You begin to doubt yourself. You begin to lose confidence in yourself. At this stage, you are at a very bad point in life and business when self-doubt enters. This self-doubt can have a detrimental effect on overall well-being and hinder further personal and professional growth. Because self-doubt is going to lead to inaction. Self-doubt will lead to your mouth shutting down. You don't get to talk. Self-doubt will lead you to not doing whatever needs to be done to produce results. But you forget that self-doubt only came about as the result of you accepting mediocrity. We have the standard method of operation. And because you are functioning at a mediocre level, you choose what to do. You choose what not to do. You choose how to do it. You choose your own duration. You choose everything you want to do your own way. And then after satisfying your mediocrity, you lose self-confidence because nobody is connected to your system. One of the laws of leadership by John Maxwell says that when, I've gotten the exact way this said, but when the real leader shows up, everybody will fall in line or something like that. People want to follow strong leaders. Human beings want to be led, but they want to be led by the strongest. Lions are led by the strongest lion in the pack. Wolves are led by the strongest wolves in the pack. That is the one that defends everybody. So if you doubt yourself and you have low self-esteem, people will not follow you. Even if they join you, they will end up leaving you and joining some other person. And you begin to see your self-esteem showing up in different ways, showing up in you, you know, getting angry at your team, at your teammates, not being there for them, not helping them, and even losing your own self-esteem. So let's have some reflections based on the consequences of mediocrity. Listen carefully. It is crucial to recognize the far-reaching consequences of mediocrity by understanding how it limits personal growth, restricts career opportunities, hampers skills development, diminishes motivation, affects self-confidence. We can gain the motivation and determination to rise above mediocrity and strive for excellence. When you understand the consequences of being a mediocre, you will never accept mediocrity in your life. It is important to understand this 
Because today, the world is in search of strong men and women. There is a shortage of strong men and women in the world. There's a shortage of strong men and women in our business. Because a lot of people survive at the level of mediocrity. Take a moment to reflect on any personal experiences or observations of how mediocrity has impacted your life or the lives of those around you. Take a moment, explore it. I told you today is going to be an exploratory session. These are, I will tell you during the reflections on things you should be doing. I'm going to go through a couple of reflections during the training today. So explore yourself. Think about your life. Think about how you run your business. Think about the things you do and look for the things that are a consequence of mediocrity in your life and work on it. In the next section, we will explore the implications of mediocrity within organizations and how it affects the, their performance and success. An organization is your team, your workplace. So as we speak, if you have team in your organization, team people in your team, begin to think about how mediocrity affects them. So in this section, we're going to look at the impact for organizations, the consequences of a culture of mediocrity, the consequences of a culture of mediocrity in your team, in your home, in your organization, right? First of all, I want us to look at the meaning of the word culture, culture, the acts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievements regarded collectively. Now that one is big English. Let's go for something better. The idea, custom, and social behavior of a particular people in a society. The idea, custom, and social behavior of a particular people in a society. That is what culture is. So the consequences of a culture of mediocrity is what we're going to look at. When there's mediocrity thriving in your organization, thriving in your team, thriving in leadership, where mediocrity thrives, what impact does it have on the organization? A culture of mediocrity within an organization can have significant repercussions on its performance, growth, and overall success. You see, when I was researching for this training, it kept on hitting me like a knife on butter. And it, kept, it keeps telling me, I need to up my game. The law of the lead kept ringing in my head because the moment you, listening to me, accepts mediocrity, everybody in your organization can only operate at the best level of mediocrity you can bring out. You won't even recognize good opportunities. Mediocrity is like poverty. It blinds you to opportunities. It makes you think you are smart. You justify it. In this section, we will delve into the various implications of a culture of mediocrity and why it is essential for organizations to foster an environment of excellence. You see, I forgot who was saying that. Okay, no, it was Eric Warren that was saying it, that you should surround yourself with an environment of excellence and success. You are, you are, it, it is not for the environment and sort of to come to you. You are the one to create an environment of excellence around you. A place where you demand excellence of yourself. You demand excellence of your team. You don't request it, you demand it. And you work with your team to achieve excellence. One of the main problems of leadership is that we give responsibility, we give people a task without giving them the tools to attain the task. When God created the world, God created everything and God didn't give any animal the responsibility to go conquer, dominate the world, except human beings. Now listen carefully. A human being cannot go on one-on-one -on -one with a gorilla and win. Mike Tyson wanted to have a boxing match with a gorilla. He wasn't allowed. He offered how many thousand ten thousand dollars to the to the person in charge of the zoo to allow him in. They refused when he was in his prime. You cannot fight the lion and win one on one. You cannot fight a tiger and win. You cannot fight a whale and win. But over time, human beings have repeatedly conquered these animals, and now and we are on top of the food chain because God gave us the number one tool to use and dominate, which is the brain. Many a times we, 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 we send our people on missions without the tools to accomplish the mission. That is not an environment of excellence. 
You want your teammates to be able to perform magic and miracles. And yet, you don't take them to miracle school. You don't take them through miracle school. So they go there and learn how miracles are done. And how do they do the miracles? Will they manufacture the miracles? No. They must go to miracle school. They go and learn how to perform miracles, even though such a school does not exist. What I'm trying to say in effect is this. It is your responsibility as someone who is building a business to create an environment of excellence for yourself. Do not expect people to come from outside to come create that environment of excellence. You must be the person who eschews mediocrity and you will now be able to build a team of people who are not mediocre. They say birds of the same feathers flock together. If you experience mediocre in your organization, and you leave them around you and your team, in the long run, you can only have them negatively impact your people and raise more mediocres around them. Let me tell you, mediocres have nothing doing. So they always hang around. Mediocres always hang around. Let me explain that. If you have one mediocre in your office, he hangs around other people in the office. You who is the person of excellence, are not usually there because you are you are performing task. It is that mediocre who is hanging around in your office that will tell the, the others in your office. I beg this work don't tire me. I beg make five o'clock do make a close. We can wahala with this. Walk 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 every time. Walk 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 walk. Person will kill himself for walk. It is that mediocre that will continue to infuse negative ideas into the people in your environment, and you wouldn't know what is happening because you are there working, and by the time you wake up. That one mediocre has infected your team negatively. So when you find people who are mediocre in your organization, you want to get to raise their level if you cannot do away with them. But most importantly, detach yourself from mediocre people. Detach yourself from them. If they are not ready to work on their mediocrity. We all have a level of mediocrity in our, some measure of mediocrity in ourselves. But what is important is that you see in this person the desire to break away from mediocrity. If a teammate cannot, does not want to break away from mediocrity, leave that teammate alone. Detach from him, right? So let's look at the impact of mediocrity in organizations. The consequences of a culture of mediocrity. Number one, decrease productivity and efficiency. When mediocrity becomes the norm, productivity and efficiency suffers in your organization. Average or subpar performance leads to delays leads to errors, leads to inefficiencies in workflows and processes. If these things are having challenges in the organization, how will that business be? How will your business be? How? Pay attention to what we're teaching you here today. This is content that companies will come and bring their management team together and pay three, four hundred thousand naira per person to learn. And you are getting it for free in this masterclass. Pay attention and use it because it is going to help you in your workplace and in our business. When mediocrity becomes the norm in the organization, the culture in the organization, productivity and efficiency suffers. Average or subpar performance leads to delays, errors, inefficiencies in workflows and processes. See a whole lot of delays. Mistakes happen because nobody is diligent enough to check. People don't pay you to try to solve their problems. People pay you to solve their problems. So if your organization is not properly solving the problems of people, you know what's going to happen? They will leave your organization. As a result of decreased productivity and efficiency, projects take longer to complete, deadlines are missed, and overall organization, organizational performance is compromised. We say we're going to run a game plan for 30 days, for 90 days, and you find people who are mediocre gradually leaving, leaving the challenge, leaving the challenge until at the end, nothing is happening anymore. The deadline is missed. The, 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 the productivity of the organization is not improved. It is important we understand clearly that when an organization breeds mediocre, that organization is doomed to die. That organization is doomed. So if your team, if you are not pushing for productivity into your team, your team is about to die. Another implication, is the lack of motivation and creativity. Mediocrity stifles innovations and creativity within an organization. An organization. 
When employees settle for average results, they are less likely to think outside the box, explore new ideas, and take calculated risk. You are okay with just recruiting five people in your organization every month. You are okay that in your whole team, you are not making money. Nobody's making money. Everybody just just struggling. Average results. So because you have settled, you are no longer thinking outside the box to produce results. You can no longer explore new ideas. You cannot take any risk. Come and run Facebook ad. Ah, the last one I ran, nothing came out of it. Come and do this one. No, ah, I cannot go and share question now. Is like this hot song? The one I went, what came out from it? You can no longer explore new ideas. You can no longer take risk. Let me tell you guys, for those of you who are afraid of taking risk, that is the most stupid place to be in life, to not take risk. The greatest risk you can take in this life is to not take risk. How can you risk not taking risk? You are afraid of taking risk and you want to win? You can't win. Everything is risky. Life on its own is so risky. Let me tell you how, risk, how risky life is. You cannot get out of life alive. Life is so risky that you must die to live life. So when there is a, there is, there's a culture of mediocrity in your organization, it in, discourages innovation. It inhibits the ability of the organization to adapt to change, to meet customers' needs, and to stay ahead in a competitive market. The third one, high employee turnover and disengagement. This is attrition. High employee turnover and disengagement. People are leaving, 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 leaving. Because of that, you cannot have people who are properly trained in your organization. Because they come, take the beginning, train from beginning, get to 5%, they leave. Another will come, start from zero to 10%, they leave. Another will come, start from zero to 7%, they leave. A culture of mediocrity often leads to higher employee turnover and disengagement. Talented and driven individuals seek environments that encourage growth, recognize achievements, and offer opportunities for advancement. If these things are not found in your organization, people who are talented, who would have stayed, will leave. And then you go start from scratch. When mediocrity prevails, top, where, when mediocrity prevails, top performers may become disenchanted and seek opportunities elsewhere, resulting in a loss of valuable talent and institutional knowledge. So you can see that it is of grave importance that you as the leader of the organization is at the top of ensuring your teammates, your teammates are high performers by making sure that they are not mediocre, taking them through the training and what is required. That is why you will see that you cannot, as someone who wants to build a team, come late to our trainings or what still not even attend at all. In fact, there is no difference between coming late and not attending. There's no difference. Only a mediocre says, sees the difference in that. Only a mediocre. There's absolutely no difference between you coming late and you not attending our training. You lose high performance. You lose people who may have become high performance. Why? Because they look at what's happening and say, no, I cannot stay in such an environment of mediocrity. And many of you might have been trained. They have gotten some measure of training. You lose it. And now you go employ new people and you start from scratch to train them again. Missed business opportunities and competitive disadvantage. Number four, organizations that settle for mediocrity are more likely to miss out on promising business opportunities. They may fail to identify emerging markets, overlook potential partnerships, or neglect to capitalize on innovative ideas. As a result, they fall behind competitors and face a competitive disadvantage that hampers growth and profitability. Oh, uh, crap. If you are still considering a life of mediocrity, you are seeing what can be, your, what you can, what can be happening to you. You see, for so many people, they, what the, the problem is that you don't see what you have lost. And because you don't see what you have lost by becoming a mediocre, you continue to be a mediocre. It's not like you're not doing the business, though. You are doing it. You are showing up. You are making invitations. You are doing follow-ups. You are doing close-down. You are doing, at, attending events. You are promoting events. But you are doing it at the level of a mediocre. And then you see your colleagues 
who are all out, who are not mediocre, doing better than you. Both of you sat down. Both of you made 100 calls. But now, at the point of the of, of um, attending the event, your colleague had 70 people attending. You had only seven. Why? It is because you are operating at the level of mediocre. You will miss out on opportunities and you have a competitive disadvantage. Mediocres can't win because they are not competitive. Mediocres are not competitive, so they cannot win. You must be competitive to win. That's why it's called win. To win means you did better than something. You must be competitive. Some people say, hey, I'm only competing against who I was yesterday. Guy, that's a mediocre saying. Find the best in the industry and beat him. Don't compete against your best self. Your best self might be an absolute mediocre. So you're competing against your mediocre self. I want to be better than I was. I'm competing against myself so I can be better than I was yesterday. And at that level, you're operating for the next 1,000 years. You'll be operating at mediocre level. Find the best in the industry and beat him. Let me tell you, if you beat the best in the industry, you will be better than where you were yesterday and also be better than the best in the industry. Mediocrity can have negative impact on reputation and customer satisfaction. Number five, a culture of mediocrity can harm an organization's reputation and customer satisfaction. When customers experience average or subpar products or services, their trust and loyalty declines. How many of you will like to go back to a restaurant that gave you average service? You paid premium price to go eat in a restaurant, which is supposed to be a good restaurant, only for you to get there. Tables are not clean. The cutleries are not properly washed. The food was cooked without intention. Everything just sucked back. Everything sucked back. So what do you do? Do you keep on coming to social organization to eat? No, you don't. That will be the last time you show up there. What makes you think that is not happening in your own business today? But because you have not even explored it, you don't know what is happening. Hear this. Negative word of mouth spreads, tarnishing the organization's image and reducing its ability to attract and retain customers. This is what happens when your organization is filled with mediocres. Nobody will want to join you. Nobody will want to stay if at all they join you. They will talk about it, it will spread, and nobody will join you. We've seen people build organizations, companies, and feel that they are doing so well. The company begins to become um, 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 what's this language? They begin to feel proud, become erratic. They speak to customers anyhow, and gradually one customer stops going there. And then tells some other person who stopped going there. A third person stops going there. And all of a sudden, nobody goes to this place anymore. And it collapses. So I'm wondering what happened. It is because they allowed the culture of mediocrity to thrive. So let us reflect now on what we have been hearing so far, right? On this part. It is important, it is evident that a culture of mediocrity has far reaching implications for organizations. By recognizing the negative impact on productivity, innovation, employee engagement, business opportunities, reputation, reputation, and customer satisfaction, organizations can take proactive steps to further to foster a culture of excellence. Reflect on this. When you see these impacts in your own organization, you want to take some steps to help sort it out. So take a moment to reflect on any experiences or observations of how a culture of mediocrity has affected organizations you have encountered. In the next section, we're going to explore the root causes of mediocrity and why individuals and organizations fall into this trap. So pay attention to the next session carefully. I believe we're getting value. So here, we're going to be discussing the root causes of mediocrity. Because what, when you know where your problem is coming from, your problem is half solved, right? So to effectively address mediocrity, it is crucial to understand the underlying factors that contribute to its existence. Why is it there in the first place? In this section, we will explore the root causes of mediocrity and how they can hinder personal and organizational growth. So let's dive right in. Number one, root causes of Mediocrity. Number one, fear of failure and risk aversion. Fear of failure. Fear of failure is a common barrier to excellence. Individuals may hesitate to take risk or pursue ambitious goals due to the fear of making mistakes or facing potential 
setbacks. This fear of failure often leads to a preference for safe and comfortable choices, resulting in mediocrity. You don't want to fail. I don't want to lose my money. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be disgraced. I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to. I don't want to. You will not invite your friends because you don't want to hurt their feelings. You don't want to feel bad. You don't want them to lose their money. You don't want to lose. This is fear that stops you from taking risk. Then you begin to operate at the mediocre level. Why? Because you are afraid. Fear of failure is a very big one. Number two, root cause of mediocrity. Comfort zone mentality and resistance to change. Hmm. The comfort zone is a state of familiarity and security where individuals feel at ease and unchallenged. Staying within the comfort zone hampers personal and professional growth. This definition is powerful. The comfort zone is a state of familiarity and security where individuals feel at ease and unchallenged. Oh my goodness. This is what is holding a lot of people down in life, in business, in every aspect. You don't want to take risks. You don't want to stress yourself. You, it is called suffering and smiling. You feel at ease. You feel unchallenged. You don't want to challenge yourself. What a terrible way to live life. You don't grow in the comfort zone. Resistance to change and a reluctance to step outside familiar boundaries prevent individuals from embracing new opportunities and experiences. How will you know your capability when you only exist in your comfort zone? How? How will you know how much you can produce when you're only producing at the level at which you can see? You exist there. You don't want to step outside what is familiar and see what's available for you to experience and achieve in this massive earth built by the amazing God. And you sit down in your comfort zone and you die in mediocrity. Number three, lack of self-belief and limited perceptions. Low self-belief and limiting self-perception can contribute to mediocrity. When individuals doubt their capability to underestimate and or underestimate their potentials, they are more likely to settle for average performance. Don't believe in yourself. Limiting belief in yourself. Limiting belief in your business. Limiting belief in your capacity. You don't think you are capable. You don't think you are worthy. You cannot stand up and go speak to somebody and expect results. You already convinced yourself that you cannot do this thing, that whatever you say will not succeed. So most of the problem people have is that they impose upon themselves these limiting beliefs, and they are more likely to settle for average performance. These self-imposed limitations prevent them from pursuing ambitious goals, reaching their full potentials. It's crazy. And these are one of the things that happens to you because of mediocrity. Are we following? All right. Now, next is absence of clear goals and purpose. Absence of clear goals and purpose. Without clear goals and a sense of purpose, individuals may lack direction and motivation. When there's no clarity about what one aims to achieve or the purpose behind their actions, mediocrity creeps in. The goal is not clear. Mediocrity creeps in. What if there's supposed to be a football match and the both teams are there, the crowd is there, everybody is ready. And before the whistle is blown, the lines are cleaned off, the goalposts are removed, and everybody is told, go ahead and play. What do you think will happen? Chaos. Where there is no clear goals, where there are no clear goals and purpose, chaos reigns. And chaos is promoted by mediocrity. When there is no clarity about what one wants aims to achieve or the purpose behind their action, mediocrity creeps in. That's why a lot of people are mediocre, because there's no clear goal. Clear goals provide a roadmap for excellence, and serve as a source of inspiration and focus. Where focus is, their energy flows. Without focus, energy doesn't flow there. It's as simple as that. What you frame is what you focus on. When you frame your goals and look at those goals, your mind goes there to make it happen. So you want to fight mediocrity? Become more goal-driven. Number five, procrastination and lack of accountability. Procrastination and lack of accountability hinders progress and contributes to mediocrity. Putting off important tasks and failing to take ownership of one's action and outcomes can lead to suboptimal results. And that's what happens. Say procrastination is a thief of time. 
They say procrastination is a lazy man's psychology. Procrastination is the nail with which you build a house of failures. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it next tomorrow. I will, I will start doing my business tomorrow. I will start doing my exercises tomorrow. When you are not accountable to people to work with, to help you, to leaders who will help you, when the leaders are trying to be, make you accountable, you are resisting people who are trying to help you by demanding accountability on you, of you. You look at it as if they are punishing you because they are telling you submit your KPI. You refuse. They are telling you, because you did not do this, pay this fine. You refuse. You will operate at the level of a mediocre. When you refuse to let your leaders raise you up from that place of mediocrity where you are so comfortable in the comfort zone, procrastination prevents individuals from realizing their full potentials and erodes their ability to excel. I will round up the training today with these reflections. By identifying these root causes, of, root causes of mediocrity, individuals and organizations can begin to address them proactively. Overcoming fear of failure, stepping outside the comfort zone, cultivating self-belief, setting clear goals, and embracing accountability are essential steps towards breaking free from mediocrity and achieving excellence. So take a moment to reflect on any personal experiences or observations of these root causes of mediocrity. In the next section, we will explore strategies for overcoming mediocrity and unlocking our full potentials. We're going to be doing that in the next session. I want to let you know this, that it is not in, in hearing, it is in the doing. Success is reserved for the doers, right? Not just for those who hear, but also for those who do, who take action. These are the people that eventually become successful. Because you see, anybody can hear, anybody can hear, but not anybody, not everybody can act. Second, Anybody can hear, but not anyone, not everyone can take action. That is why we keep on telling you, it is in the doing, right? It is in the doing. At the end of this program, if we have time, I will still talk about, um, um, play you a video from at Williams. Of course, we've seen that video before, but I'm going to play it again, especially for those who have not seen that particular video. So you see, it's in the doing. When we talk about all these things in our, in our meetings, over and over, over and over, the cost of mediocrity, the, the power of failure, this, that, 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 and you just hear it without taking action. It's like pouring water on rocks. It's like pouring water on rocks. But if you take action, if you take action, then you will produce the desired results. So um, this morning, I want to just take you through the conclusion of the cost of mediocrity, right? But during the um, motivations, something struck me deeply. I've been saying this, but hearing it from another person in the way he put it really struck me deeply. Um, Les Brown said, life is a fight for territory. Once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will take over. Naturally, naturally, there is no big deal about it. Life is a fight for territory. I Remember telling people a lot when we started our business, shortly after we started our business, that this business is war, that this is a war. And unless you realize that this is a war, you can't win this battle. We find people come and tell us all sorts of things then. They tell us, um, um, do your business how you want to do your business. They, they sell pictures that don't work. You see, they tell us, um, if they tell us about um, a stay-at-home mom um, who makes seven figures a month. And then they put a picture of a woman sitting down at home, breastfeeding a child with one hand. With the other hand, she's cooking. With one leg, she's sewing. With the other leg, she's typing on her computer. With her ear, she's answering a phone call. And it says, stay at home mom makes $1 million, $1 million every month. Guys, those are deceptive, deceptive promotions. And those are some of the things that made network marketing have the bad taste it has today. They tell us, do the business at your own time. Do it when you want, at your own time, with this, with that. You don't stress yourself. You choose who you work with and the rest of them. These are some of the reasons why you have a lot of people who are not producing because these mindsets totally goes against the mindset of productivity. Imagine you are running a bank. Imagine you are running a bank and 
you, you hear your staff telling people, come tell your staff, come to work when you want to come to work, choose who you want to, um, the people you want to collect their money. If some people come and you don't like that, don't like them, don't collect their money, you can resume anytime, work any hour you want, and the rest of them. What will you tell that staff? Tell, not tell. What will you do to that staff? What will you do to that person? I'm very sure you will sacrifice that person to the ancestors. You will donate the person to the gods fast, including the staff that is listening, whether the person is taking action or not, is doing it or not. But when we come to our own business, we tell ourselves, do it if you like, show up if you like, you know, make us if you like, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. I mean, you, know, you just, you just make your people, you, 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 you condemn your people to mediocrity. The human being wants to be challenged. The human mind wants to be challenged. Even though we know that the mind wants to be lazy, the mind also wants to be challenged. If you don't challenge the mind, the mind will relax in that state of comatose and do nothing. But unless you put your mind to challenge, challenge yourself, you can't go far. Life is a fight for territory. Don't sit down. There are 7 billion people in the world our business can pay you up to 8.4 million naira, 8.6 million naira every day. 8.6 billion, 8.6 billion. That's the yearly capacity of our business from 31 account, 8.6 billion. Is it 8.6 billion? So 8.6 million, sorry, monthly, daily rather. 8.6 8.6 million daily. That's the capacity of our business. The question I want to ask you is this. How much of that territory comes to you? A business has the capacity of paying you. It's like, it is like um, you, 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 you go to an ocean of money and they tell you, you, see this ocean? If you can take everything, it is for you. And then you go to that ocean and you go with a wallet so you can put the money in the wallet from the ocean. And they tell you, you have one hour whatever you can take in one hour is yours and you go with a wallet and you just put the thing in wallet yesterday i watched one one um um a, a, a video how many will know this video just flip and eat where they will put um um water in a bottle and then they will flip the bottle it will not land anyone, anyone that lands you start eating whatever is there and um, i saw turkey packed full the place was filled with turkey cow leg they had gala, they had drinks, and the gentleman, they started, a, a young boy got it, started eating turkey, turkey, turkey. A second guy came eating turkey, you know, enjoying himself. And one guy now won. When the guy won, the guy sat down. Guess what? The guy took gala. The guy took gala. There was juicy pepper turkey. The guy took gala and Fanta. He finished the gala. I was expecting him to go for cow leg or something. He went for the second gala. You see, Life is going to present to you the capacity to take as much as you want. But some of you will take gala while others are going for the pepper, turkey, and the drinks. Some of you will go for the gala. The business has the potential of paying you two over 8.6 million naira every day. Every day. Out of the 8.6 million every day, how much of that territory comes to you? How much comes to you? Do you just sit down and relax or do you go for the fights? Do you go for the fights? It's up to you. You can choose to be a champion or you can choose to be a mediocre, right? It is entirely up to you. So what does it mean when we say someone is a mediocre, right? What does it mean? Let's go through that um, um, explanation again. What does it mean when we say someone is a mediocre? A mediocre is a person that is not very good at anything or in or something in particular or something that is not very good. A mediocre is that is a person that is not very good at something or not very good at anything in particular or something that's not very good. That's a mediocre. A mediocre is somebody who has not taken time to develop himself. A mediocre is somebody who is not interested in personal development. A mediocre is somebody who is just interested in being there. How are you? I'm just there. That's a mediocre. And we treated a couple of um, stuff. We talked about the understanding the consequences of mediocrity, what happens to you if you're a mediocre. We talked about the implications for organizations, right? The consequences of the cost of the of um, 
mediocrity, what happens to an organization that is mediocrity driven. We talked about that. We even talked about the causes, the root causes of mediocrity. We talked about that, right? Today, we're going to look at overcoming mediocrity, unlocking your full potential. Unlocking your full potential because your potential is under lock and key. If you want to really realize your full potential, one of the first and most important step you must take is to overcome mediocrity. A mediocre is somebody living life way below his or her potential. That is who a mediocre is. So we're going to explore strategies and techniques to overcome mediocrity and unlock your full potentials, right? I'll be giving you some tips. If you implement these practices, you can break free from the limitations of mediocrity and you can begin to strive for excellence. I really want you to pay attention because this is something that will help you. When you look at your business today, your business is where your business is because you are operating at the level of a mediocre. That's why everybody said, my wish for you is that you become a network marketing professional. My wish for you is that you decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we in network marketing have a better way. So let us go tell the world. It's a stone cold fact. My wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. My wish for you is that you decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. So let's go change the world. This used to be resonating in my head very well when he was always saying it. And that's the truth. We have a better way. Now, there are so many ways you can make money. There are so many ways you can make a lot of money, right? But when you consider the risk factor involved in the money you make, then you understand what we're talking about. Somebody says, eh, I can go into real estate, right? Fine, you can go into real estate. That's good. How much can you make in real estate? You can make a lot of money. That's good. First of all, you need the upfront capital, number one, which most people don't have. Number two, what is the risk involved in it? What's the risk involved in it? You can, okay, let's assume you have a job, they pay you 10 million naira a month, right? Now you have a job, they pay you 10 million naira a month. The question you want to ask yourself, what are the risk factors involved in that job? You go work in the oil company, see what goes on there, see the risk they go through for you to make that kind of money they make. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what is the risk involved? So it's not just in the money. I make 5 million naira in a month, you make 5 million naira in a month. My risk is zero. 0. 0.00. For many of you, your risk is almost 100% to make that kind of money. So what is the risk factor? So for you to grow and overcome mediocrity, step number one, you need to embrace a growth mindset. You need to embrace a growth mindset. Very, very important. Please write that down. Adopt a growth mindset. Embrace a growth mindset. Very crucial if you want to overcome mediocrity. What you need to do is to believe in your ability to learn. Believe in your ability to grow. Believe in your ability to improve. I keep telling you, when a human being is born, that human being is born at a state called tabula rasa. Tabula rasa means empty slate, means there's nothing in the head of a child. Everything that the child is going to be is going to be programmed into the child from outside. That's why the Jesuits, the Jesuits are a class, a, a group of priests, very highly intelligent priests. They say, Give me a child for the first seven years of the life and I will give you a man that will change the world. Something like that. Because we know that within the seven, first seven years, the brain of a child is at a state, I've forgotten the name of that state, where, where the child can absorb, 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 and practically almost everything the child is going to become is going to be done within the first seven years. So watch the first seven years. But we have also come to understand that after that first seven years, you can still change. But for you to change, it is going to be as a result of you deciding to change. So what that means is that you must know that, yes, you can grow. A lot of people today don't know they can grow. They tell themselves, this is me. I can't do anything about it. This is who I am. This is who I am. That is not who you are. The truth is that you don't even know who you are when you make statements like that. You don't know who you are. You don't know your ability. You don't know your capacity. You don't even know what you have. That is why somebody can make such statements. You can change. So you want to embrace challenges as opportunities for development, right? You want to see setbacks as learning experiences and not failures when you have the growth mindset. So you have to cultivate a mindset that encourages continuous learning 
and personal development. People can be chasing you to attend Zoom meetings, can be chasing you to attend cell meetings, chasing you to attend masterclass. You attend masterclass late, you attend everything late. Why don't you tell yourself that I will stop attending these meetings late? I will stop attending late. Now let us do something because you need to help yourself, right? You are using your phone right now. I want you to minimize this meeting as I'm speaking, minimize the meeting. And I want you to right now go on, go to the alarm of your phone, click on the alarm of your phone or click on the, however you can schedule your calendar and put in an alarm that is going to ring by 7.45 or 7.50. Put that alarm on 7.50. Set an alarm for 7.50 on your phone now. Please, if you have set the alarm, come to the chat room and tell me done. And let that alarm ring from Monday to Saturdays, to Saturday. Set the alarm. Once you're done setting the alarm, just come to the chat room and say done. It's not a big deal. Just say done, right? Monday to Saturdays. Set the alarm. Let it ring every day. Because I am, I am what I'm giving you are strategies. If you can grow into not attending your cell meetings late, trust me, a lot of things are going to begin to fall in place for you because you will begin to realize the value of being early on your own. You can choose, you can get to your office early. You can be going to your office early, but you've still not realized it because there's a big stick over your head if you come late to the office. But you have to grow to a point where you no longer come late because you choose not to come late. Right? Click on the clock icon on your phone, then go to alarms. Set it. 7.50. Set it. Once that alarm rings, once that alarm rings, know that cell meeting has started. So if you didn't use the calendar that you can actually edit it to put them um, cell meeting, just continue to have this in your mind. The moment this alarm is ringing, it means it's a cell meeting time. Open Zoom, log into cell meeting. Whether it has started or not, log in. By 7.55, they will start the meeting. They will do affirmations. 8 a.m., meeting start. Do it for some meetings. Do it for master class. So 8 a.m. Mondays, 7.50 a.m. Mondays to Saturdays. Do it. Be open to growing. Be open to growing. So continually attend trainings. Continually attend meetings. Continually. You are growing. Have that growth mindset. Because if you are not growing, you are dying. If you're not growing, you are dying. The second step to unlocking your full potentials is to set ambitious and meaningful goals. Ambitious and meaningful goals. Now hear me. I remember when I was building my business and um, people kept telling me, you are building your castles in the air. I looked at them and I laughed because it really, it was a castle in the air to them. And I said something that stuck to me and I've been saying that ever since. One man's goal is another man's castle in the air. One man's goal is another man's castle in the air. If your dreams don't scare you, it's not big enough. We've heard that many times. If your dreams don't scare you, it's not big enough. And you see, I sometimes when people you show people this business and they don't join, some of you feel bad. Why would you feel bad? Now, I want to approach this from a different angle. Because some of us will say, eh, it's not for everybody. Nobody will do it. Not everybody will do the business, blah, blah, blah. No. No, we so, uh, are just educating people, education and understanding, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we understand that was, that's what we are doing, but that's not the reason why you shouldn't feel bad. Let me tell you, it goes deeper than that. You can bring a set of twins, very smart people, sharp people, bring them into a room, show them this business. One of them will see the business, the other one will not see the business. These are people who behave alike, who think alike. Some of these people, you can even preempt them, they can even um, well, preempt themselves or something like that. They can decide to say something and two of them will say the same thing at the same time. Some of them are so strong that they could even communicate with themselves telepathically. But one will see the business, one will not see the business. The question is why? Why does one see the business and why does one not see the business? The answer is very simple. And the day you understand this answer is the day your liberation starts. God opens the eyes of those he chooses to see this business. God opens the eyes of those he chooses to see the business. We can show everybody the business. But it is God that selects those who see the business. Our business is a business for people who like helping people. Two people can see the business. God will blind one and open the eyes of the other. He says their hearts, are, their eyes are blind. Their mind, their, their ears are deaf. At least they see with their eyes. 
hear with their ears and they're converted and turned back to me. Sometimes God just wants to lock up the mind of somebody so the person does not see. For those of you who are in this business today, you've seen the business, you've signed up. Keep on thanking God for opening your eyes to see. Keep on thanking God for opening your eyes to see. Don't think you signed up into this business because you are one Don Dabarachi there who is able to understand and figure things out and you know you are a Don, you want to come. No, there's absolutely nothing to do with that. People sharper than you saw the business. People smarter than you saw the business. People less smart than you saw the business. They did not join. You joined because God opened your eyes. to. So when you meet people, you show the business who don't see the business. Don't cry. Pray for them. Pray for God to open their eyes. Some might take one year, two years. But when their eyes finally open, they come in, they run the business. So when you have a vision given to you by God and some other person is not seeing it and you have the conviction, this is what I want to achieve and some other person is not seeing it, don't blame the person because your vision, it's your goal. So if it is your goal and it's looking like a castle in the air for the other person, that's fine. If you have a goal that looks very big, your job is not to focus on the problems, which is the goal itself. Your job is to focus on the solutions to make your goals a reality. As a young boy growing up, I belonged to a group in church called the Legion of Mary. And one of the core lessons I remember from this organization many years ago, very many years ago, a few decades ago, that lesson stuck to me. And it's one lesson I've carried all through my life. It says, for every impossible task, break it into 100 possible steps. For every impossible task, break it into 100 possible steps. And that was the mindset I had when I was thinking of the Kingsman's project. The goal is to become a global leader. You want to raise global leaders in your team. Raising a global leader seems to be an impossible task. But what do we do? We break everything down. So how do we do it? Raise five active partners. Work with those five active partners to become kingsmen. Work with those kingsmen to raise their own king, five kingsmen. Those kingsmen become um, emerging cell leader. You become cell leader. Work with those people, continue to grow. And before you know what's happening, you become a global leader because it is possible to break the business to the barest minimum, which is activate. Activating means every month you connect to people as a full-timer, as a full-timer in our business, as somebody who is, who is an active member doing the business. Every month, all you need to do is connect two people minimum. Two people minimum join you every month to remain active. Two people every month. Then when somebody joins your business afresh, we work with him to connect one person and he becomes an active member. And from there, we work with him to become a kingsman. So the goals must be meaningful, meaning it must be a goal that drives you. It must be ambitious. If it's not big enough, if it doesn't scare you, then it's not a big goal. We say ambitious. We don't. We didn't say stupid because some goals can be really stupid. You are here and you say, you know what? My goal is to travel to the Milky Way, out of the Milky Way galaxy in the next two days. Or you're here, my goal is to become the president of the United States of America in one week, right? So some goals are just stupid. They're not goals. But your goals must meet certain criteria for it to be ambitious and meaningful. So setting clear and ambitious goals is essential if you want to reach your full potential. Like I usually say, what if you want to have a football match? Everybody set, the crowd is set, everybody referee is there. And before it was happening, they remove the goalposts, clean up the lines, and then the referee blows the whistle, pee, start the ball. What do you think will happen in that match? There will be chaos because there are no goals, no, nothing driving you, no, no focus, nowhere to go to. And they say, where focus is, their energy flows. When you look at a football match, who can tell me, where does the energy of a football match flow to? Where does the energy of the football match flow to? Who knows? The energy in a football match, where does it flow to? It flows to the goalpost. flows to the goalpost. Everybody is moving towards the goalpost. Even the crowd, their eyes are not on the center. Their eyes are on the goalpost. Where do you have the, 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 the crowd scream and shout the most? Is it at the middle of the pitch? No. 
no matter what somebody is dribbling at the middle of the pitch, if like dribble the whole team, it is nothing compared to what happens when the ball is entering the net. Where energy flows, where energy flows, where focus is, their energy flows. If you want to overcome mediocrity and unlock your full potential, make sure you have a goal where you focus on and energy goes towards that direction. So you want to define what success means to you and you want to create a roadmap to achieving your success. Very important. Nobody will do it for you. You are the one that will do it. Create your own, your own brand of success. What is your brand of success? So I'm going to give every one of you an assignment this morning. And that assignment, write it down. On a one page, in fact, on one page of your hardcover notebook, define the nature of success you want for yourself, right? So on a one page notebook, define the nature of success on the full page rather of your, of your hardcover notebook, define the nature of success you want for yourself. What is the, what does success mean to you? So even understand that in the first place, don't just write one line. You want to discuss what success is for you. Now, let me, let me, let me make it more intense for you, right? Let me make it more intense. This is what I normally do with my um, leaders. I call it a mind storming session. We had one last night. So I want you to storm your mind, right? I want you to storm your mind. I'm giving you an assignment that you should do. I'm not going to ask you to submit it to me. I'm not going to mark it. I'm not going to even request for it, but it is your success that will request for it of you. I want you to sit down and on one full page, I want you to write 20, not one, not 10, not 11, not 19, 20 ways you want to live a successful life. What success means to you? Write 20, 20 points on what success means to you. Is it having a good car, driving a good, having a good house, driving a good car, is it marrying a trophy wife or whatever I want to do? Write 20 down. Don't stop until you've written 20. It might be difficult completing 20, but write it. Then after writing it, you want to take those 20 things that success means to you. Read them very, very well. Bring out the top 10 of them. And the top 10 of them, you want to write half a page on each one. After listing the 20 things, then you want to bring out the top 10 and then write half a page on each of the top 10. So if the top 10, one of them is, let's say, traveling to Tahiti on vacation, you want to bring out that and make a heading. For me, success is traveling to Tahiti on a vacation. Write it on top. And then write what success is about traveling to vacation on diet. Half a page. Success is me being able to lie on the, at the, the shores of the, of the um, Pacific Ocean, you know, um, sipping calypso under a coconut tree, while swaying on, under a hammock, right? And um, listening to the crashing of the waves on the shore. I want to watch people who are surfing there. I want to, I want to you know, um, um, take my wine under this, drink coconut juice, what, whatever it is, you want to just write it in full. If, you're, if, you're, if your target is to own um, a, 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 a beautiful car, you want to write, it, okay, I want to own this car, I want to feel the leather seats, I want to look at the colors, I want to look at the display, the display boards, I want to be able to, to speed at so and so speed, I want to open the roof, I want to have the breeze blow on my faces, I want to, on my face, I want, whatever it is, do that assignment. Even if you have never experienced these things, in the course of doing this, I mean, go Google it. You've never been to Tahiti. Go Google Tahiti and read about Tahiti and use it and write it down. You've never entered that kind of car you want to buy. Fine. Google the car. Watch reviews about the car and write it down. Do that today. 20 things. List them. Top 10 most important ones. Put them together and then develop those 10. Half a page, half a page, half a page. And study it. You will see what I'm talking about. So, Ensure that your goals, this becomes the goals that will drive you in this business. It becomes the goal. Come in and you say, I want to become financially free. What is financial freedom? You, have, you don't have an idea. A lady joined my business many years ago. And she came, she paid. She said, I'm going to do this business. I want to set my family free. My mother has suffered. My, my, I'm a single mom. My, my kid is this. This one is happening. I want to do this. I'm going to take this business to the next level, blah, blah, blah. And she was crying, crying during the presentation. When we were done, she signed up. She was going to do this, do that, do this. I said, beautiful, use your children as a target. This is, we talked and talked that day. And she went home. Since that day, 
up to today, these two eyes have not seen the woman. You see, even though she said her children, her children, her children, those kids are not her priority. They are not her priority. Her mom is not her priority. Just like for many of you here right now, your priority is not your priority. It just made you feel momentarily good. I'm doing this to, to change my life, to make my family financially free. I'm doing this to do this. I'm doing this. To do that. It is not your damn priority. Go do this assignment and figure out some things for yourself. It might not be one thing to drive you. It might be a whole lot of things to drive you. Now, let me give you another assignment that you will not like to do. Well, you do that assignment too, right? In fact, you will do this one I will give you now first. Do it first before you do the second one of what success means to you. So what you need to do now is write out 20. You will sit down, no? You will sit down because what I'm giving you, uh, because if, you're, if your mind is not even ready yet, all we're doing is useless. Write out now, not now, later, list 20 things poverty has done to you that you never want to happen again. 20, 20 ways you have suffered by not living to your full potentials, by not being successful. 20 ways you have suffered, write them down. List 20 of them, think very hard. When your landlord dealt with you, write it down. When you couldn't pay your children's school fees, write it down. When your, your, your spouse embarrassed you because of money, write it down. When your friends laughed at you, write it down. When you hit somebody's um, um, granite oil and they tore your clothes because you couldn't pay, pay, write everything down, 20 of them. Then look at it, like I said, and bring out the most, the 10 most painful, 10 most painful, and write half a page on that particular program, activity that happened. Write it down, 10. So after doing the 20, you bring out the 10 most painful, write it down, and then expand half a page on each of them. And then I want you to read it three times. Read it three times. After you've read those problems that occurred to you three times, right? Listen to what you will do. After you finish reading them three times, take the, that one, don't write it in your hardcover notebook. You're not writing that, write that one on a piece of paper. After you've done that, what you want to do, if the people are moved by pain or by gain, many of us have forgotten some of those experiences. So we want to recall it momentarily. After writing all these things down, read it three times, go through it, don't let anybody disturb you, then take that paper outside and set it on fire. Set it on fire, burn it out, burn it up. As you burn it, smile to yourself, right? If you can have an encouraging song, put it there. As you burn it, smile to yourself, burn it up, burn everything. Whether you're not being able to feed yourself, it doesn't matter whether you're still going through the problem, just burn it. When you're done, take your hardcover notebook and then do this activity I told you, what success means to you. You will see that you will be solving most of many of the problems that you read, that you had before. You do that thing down. Those 10 points that you have now written down and developed for success are those points that will guide you as you do your business. Now, ensure that your goals are meaningful and that your goals are aligned with your values and your aspirations. Setting goals provide the motivation and the focus you need to excel, showing you how to unlock your full potentials. Number three, take calculated risk. Take calculated risk. You see, one of the reasons why people remain mediocre is because they don't take risk. They don't take risk. They are always cautious, always cautious, always, you know, I don't want to fail. I don't want to lose. I don't want this to happen. I don't want this to happen. Let me tell you, failure is the beginning of success. Failure is where success starts. Without failure, there can be no success. You know why? You are not God. Without failure, there can be no success. They say failure is the ladder that leads to success. When Thomas Edison, he invented the electric bulb, he said he did that thing 10,000 times and it didn't work. Somebody asked him, the reporter was asking him, so you have failed 10,000 times. He said, no, I did not fail 10,000 times. I only discovered 10,000 ways the electric bulb does not work. He knew where he was going to. So there are 10,000 ways it doesn't work. Are we following? What if he said, uh, I'm, it might, I, I'm going to lose my money as I do the experiments. I've done 1,000 experiments and I've lo I lost money. So let no need continue. No, I have to keep on doing it. I have to keep on doing it. You must take risk. Let me tell you something. You see, both successful people and people who fail have one thing in common. Who knows what that thing is? Both successful people and people who fail, they 
both have one thing in common. Who knows what that one thing is? People who succeed and people who fail have one thing in common. What is it? Somebody says time. Somebody says, hmm. I don't know. It's not hmm. It's not time. What do they have in common? Fear? No. No. They both fail at some point? No. They had to continue? No. Not quitting? No. Both successful people and failure, people who fail, the one thing they have in common is they both want to win. They want to win. The man who fails and the man who wins, they both want to win, right? But you see, they want to win, but the reason, they, they, there is a twist. The man who fails wants to win without failing. He wants to win. He doesn't want to fail. So he just wants to go and win, 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 win. That's his own. But the man who wins understands that failing is part of the winning process. So he is not held down by failure. He is propelled when he fails. But the man who fails says to himself, I want to win. Now I've fallen, I've failed. So what? You give up. Because he does not expect to fail. And failure comes and he hits him and gives him a sucker punch. And he doesn't recover. The man who wins will take a, the punch, he will fall down, he will stand up, he will continue, he will fall, he will stand up, he will continue, he will fall. And let me tell you something. For every time you fall forward, you fall closer to the finish line. Let that sink in. For every time you fall forward, you fall closer to the finish line. There's something I call the growth curve in our business. And I tell people, many, of, many people come into this business and they are thinking about all the problems and everything. And I tell you, there's something I call the growth curve. Let me use this, um, just share it with you, right? This is a masterclass. Let me just share with you what I mean by the growth curve. I've, I've shown a lot of people this in the past, but I'll share with you again. This is what I mean by the growth curve. I'll still come to our discussion, right? Now, now pay attention. This is our business, right? This, look at this curve I'm drawing now. When you start the business, you are here, right? This is when you start. You are the zero point when you start the business. You come for your IPO, your quick start guide. We start working with you. And over, this is time, right? And here you have your results. Now, I say time and results because um, results can, can be a lot. It can be your money you've made. It can be the knowledge you've gotten, right? Now, when you start learning and working the business, go to QSG, IPO, and everything, we start working with you. You start going up, 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 up. You get to a point where something happens. Probably a rejection hits you, right? You invite somebody and person does not attend. They don't show up to the, the meeting. Something, a rejection hits you, and you drop. You drop down. You've gotten some measure of training, but we're still working with you and training you. You still come up again. You start going up again. We motivate you, motivate you. Something else happens. You lose a few people in your team. You get motivated. You drop down. We work with you again. Walk, 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 walk. Something else happens again. You get motivated. You drop down, right? We work with you, work with you, work with you. Something else happens again. You drop down, right? You might not be making as much money as you're expecting to make, but as you are going, you are dropping. 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 Now look at this. These are your results here. This is a time that has passed since you started the business. Look at this place where you dropped the first time. Where you dropped the first time. This place where you dropped the first time. Here. If I measure from here to the ground, there is a change in results. You are no longer at the point. Let's call this point A. At point A, you are no longer at the ground level. You have gone high. Your result has gone high. But you have dropped down. What most people focus on is the fact that they drop into this valley. They are dropping. But you didn't drop to the level you started from. You are still higher than where you started from. And we continue to work with you. You started rising again. And then you had another drop in your business. Probably your spouse told you something or somebody told you something. You didn't like it. And you felt bad. Or somebody left your business. Somebody signed up and didn't do the business. You now felt everything is, is crumbling around you. You dropped into a valley. Into a valley. But there is still a larger change if you measure it. Look at the results. See point A, this is point B. Point B is higher. You still continued, you went up, went up, went up, went up, and then you dropped again, right? You dropped again. At this point where you dropped here, 
you can see you still have a higher result value here. See, the result can be that you have been attending training, you have more knowledge now, that even if you're not using it now, you can, use it, you can use it later. You are beginning to hear concepts that you never knew existed in the first place. Many people now are hearing things they never knew existed in the first place. And then you continue, you go up, you go up, you go up, and then drop again. You can see here, you have dropped, but you are better. At this point here, maybe you're only doing, you're only doing 10K in the business. Here now probably you're doing 30K in the business. Here you're probably doing 50K, 80K in the business. Here probably you've reached, let's say, 170K in the business. But it's possible you did 180K, 190K, and you dropped down to 170K. It's possible you did 300K and you dropped down to 170K. You are better than when you are making zero Kobo from the business at point D. Same thing, point E. You're much better. Probably you're doing 300K at that point, right? That's E. You're much better than where you were in terms of knowledge, in terms of income. You must not be making a millionaire, but even if you make more than you are making, you are making more than you made when you started, right? You continue. Probably here you're now hitting 700K. And you can see you're way higher in experience, way higher in results. This is what is happening in our business. I call this the growth curve. So what do I ask you to do? I ask you to focus on the growth focus on the growth not on the fall most people focus on the fall instead of focusing on the growth and that is why it seems as if the world wants to end for them i call this the growth curve and it's something i really want us to pay attention to because it's going to keep you doing your business grinding your business and producing results right so we are looking at unlocking your full potentials. And I said, take calculated risk. Without risking anything, you can't amount to much. So don't be afraid. Don't say, ah, I think it's too risky. Because it's too risky, you will not do it. Let me tell you something. Everything is risky. Everything on earth is risky. Life is risky. Life is so risky that you cannot get out of life alive. I've never seen a living dead man. The only way you can get out of life is to die. So for you to be here, you're in a risky environment. So why not take the risk? But you see, the greatest risk you can take is not taking risk. The greatest risk is not to take risk. So you see, stepping outside your comfort zone is vital for personal and professional growth. If you want to grow, you must step outside your comfort zone. Be willing to take calculated risk and embrace new opportunities like this business. Embrace the opportunity, whatever it takes for you to do it. Go ahead and get it done. Push yourself beyond your perceived limits and explore uncharted territories. The world is there for you to take, for you to take over. That's why the Bible says, go subdue, conquer, fill the earth and subdue it. By taking risk, you open yourself up to new experiences and the possibilities of growth. If you want to grow, you want to stop being a mediocre, take the risk. Take the risk to learn. Take the, take the risk to do to put some money into your business and help your results grow and help your business grow. Take the risk. This is a business. And I've said it over and over again. Many of us want to run this business, but we don't want to run this business like a business. You Somebody joins me and says, where will I get the money to make phone calls? I don't know where you get the money to make the phone calls. If you don't want to make the phone calls, then you don't want to make the money. Don't cry for the money you did not make from the business you did not do. How can I put my money into the business? I already spent 50,000 naira to start the business. And you want, me to, you want me to put more money? Don't put more money. Go and sleep at home. Go and sleep at home. You have a mediocre mindset. The, in, the, the, the investment in this business is not the money you used to start. The money you used to start will be given to you in products. Products will give you, give it to you. That's the money you used to start. You will receive products. If you have not gotten your products yet, you will receive your products. So your money has been exchanged for the product, but now you have been signed up into the business. So what do you need to do? Do the business. Do the business. You will have to invest your time, your energy, your money to make people know you. And you stop becoming a mediocre. Overcoming mediocrity, unlocking your full potential. Number four, cultivate discipline and self-motivation. Cultivate discipline and self-motivation. See, listen, discipline and self-motivation is the key to overcoming mediocrity. They said discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. That's the difference, the key, between goals and accomplishments. If you cannot discipline yourself, you can't get far. 
I did a short training recently, the power of discipline. Go to my YouTube channel, you'll see it. The power of discipline. So cultivate habits that support high performance and consistency. These are habits that you have to consciously cultivate. Consciously. Habits like coming early. Habits like not leaving until it is done. These are habits that you should consciously cultivate. You come into the cell meeting, you don't leave until the cell meeting is done. You don't leave until the masterclass is done. That is, you are cultivating this. No matter how uninspiring what we are saying is sounding in your ears, stay and pick what you can pick from it. You don't know when that one life-changing word will drum into your head. Discipline. Nobody can motivate you. We can only inspire. Inspiration comes from outside. From outside, people can inspire you, tell you things that will inspire you. But motivation is a Latin word. It comes from the Latin word motare. Motare means to move, to move. To motivate means to move you, move yourself. You are the one to move yourself. So you must cultivate that discipline. Establish routines that incorporate actions aligned with your goals. So those goals that you've written down, you want to achieve, those 10 most 10 things that you've put down in paragraph, listen carefully. What you want to do now, what you want to do now is to create routines that will help you accomplish it. What we have been doing in our business of recent is to build routines into our business, to build more structure into our business. That's what we have been trying to do. And that's what we have been doing. And those who are going to build the routines and the structure and follow through are the ones that will take the business to the next level. That's why currently we have the engagement structure in our group, where you sign up and you tell us, how do you want us to work with you? How? There are three ways we can work with you. Choose. And every one of you understand that. We've said it a number of times. Step one, you can be a full-timer. A full-timer shows up by 8 a.m., closes by 6 p.m. You come to our office if you're a full-timer, right? You choose to work that way. We provide you a place to come and sit down. You do the business with us. Number two, you can choose to be a part-timer. A part-timer goes to his business or his job and does it. But the part-timer is able to bring out two days to five days in a week when he will come sit down and spend three hours with us. You must be disciplined to do that. Three hours. So, and the hours are 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Unless on that special arrangement when the person um, has a job that does not allow him. But there, there will be hold up does not count. The roads are blocked does not count. For all those people, eh, I'm taking my child to school or something happening. It does not count. Everybody has the same problems. You cannot come and disturb the activities of the full-timers. So you have to pick out the days when if your child needs to be attended to, somebody can be attending to your child at that time, and then you can come run the business if you're a part-timer. Three hours, two to five days, choose. Most preferred, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. When we know that full-timers are done with their, their, are done with their, their business of the day, and the third engagement structure is the spare timer. The spare timer only comes once a week and it comes on Thursdays or Fridays from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thursdays or Fridays from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. It comes once in a week. So you can choose. It can come 3 p.m., 4 p.m. But know that the time you come matters. The job we're going to do with you as a part-timer is to make 50 calls with you within the hours you are there as a spare timer. But the part-timer is coming every day. Every day they show up, they're going to make sure they get 10 yes to people coming for their presentations. If you discipline yourself through this process, you will end up with a team of so many part-timers, so many part-timers who are going to put so much money in your organization. Imagine you have a team that has 100 people who show up every week to do the business all around Nigeria, three times a week, part-timers. And it took you, let's say, 12 months to build 100 part-timers who show up to do the business. 100 people who spend three hours every day, three days a week. That is, each of them is spending nine hours a day. That is 900 hours every day from them, right? Every day, 900 times 30, it will tell you how many hours have been put in your organization every month. If 100 of them are getting 10 people to tell them yes, that is 9,000 um, that is um, um, 9,000 yes in your organization. So that's 1,000 people, 100 people with 10 yes. That's um, um, 1,000 yes every day in your organization. 
every day in 30 days. That means you are getting about 10,000 people, 10,000 people telling you yes. The kind of income you will be making in this business will shock you. And this is from part-timers who show up to do their business in, in bits of time. The only way you can build that kind of momentum is through discipline. You, as the leader, must be disciplined to do these things, to record your part-timers, to, to have them accountable, to call them and remind them of their appointments with you. And they won't be under pressure. The reason why there's so much attrition is because many people, you want your group to come and do the business as full-timers. You're a full-timer, you want to have them do the business as a full-timer. No, they have businesses, they have jobs, they have things they're doing. Jim Rohn calls this the power of the part-time. So they don't need to do it full-time. They can do it part-time. Everybody can do it part-time. And even if they don't have anything doing, you cannot just carry somebody and you are, you are telling them, come every day, come every day, come every day, come every day. The person feels pressure. But this removes the pressure. The person shows up, does his stuff, he goes home. Comes next week, spend three days, three days does his stuff, he goes home. He has chosen his own time and you have documented it. Practice self-discipline in your managing, in the managing of time. Practice self-discipline in managing your time. Very important. In prioritizing your task and staying focused. Prioritize your task. When they show up for those three hours, what do we do with them? We have one hour for prospecting, generating contacts. We have one hour for inviting people. We have one hour for following up on people. Within those period, those people who are invited, we invite them into a presentation where other people will run for them. So you want to cultivate intrinsic motivation by reminding yourself of the purpose and meaning behind your efforts. So those goals should be what will move you, intrinsic motivation that comes from inside. So those goals should be what will move you towards your destination. Unlocking mediocrity, unlocking, overcoming mediocrity, unlocking your full potentials. Number five, seek feedback and continuous learning. Seek feedback. Brian Tracy said, whenever something does not work, I don't say I failed. I say I got a feedback. Say it's either I am succeeding or I am getting feedback. So the moment you begin to see failure as feedback, it tells you, I mean, it's actually a feedback. If you touch something and it, 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 it pricks you hard, you move your hand, it gives you a feedback, then you don't touch this thing. And you also want to get feedback from people in your team from your team members. You want to get feedback from them on your performance, on how you are doing. Because if it's coming from your head, it's not wrong. Anything that comes from your head, it's, it's okay. It's totally good. But someone that sees the person sees it differently. So feedback is a valuable tool for growth and improvement. So you have to seek feedback from your colleagues, from your mentors, supervisors, or whatever it is. What that does is that it gives you insight into areas you want to develop. So embrace a mindset of continuous learning by seeking opportunities to expand your knowledge and your skill. Be always out to learn, to know more. Through the cell meetings, a lot of us have really, really changed. Stay curious and open-minded and be willing to adapt and evolve based on feedback and the new information you're getting from people. So ask questions. How did I do in this? How was this? Did it work? Does it work well? What are the problems with this? Get feedbacks, right? So let's take a few reflections. By embracing a growth mindset, by setting ambitious goals, by taking calculated risk, cultivating self-discipline and self-motivation, and seeking feedback from your peers for continuous learning, you can overcome mediocrity and unlock your full potentials. Take a moment to reflect on which of these strategies resonate with you and how you can start implementing them in your life today. So we're going to be discussing next the importance of persistence and perseverance in the journey to excellence, right? Now, we're going to look how to break free from mediocrity. We look at how to break free from mediocrity. Very, very important, right? We're going to be focusing on inspiring actions and fostering accountability to break free from mediocrity and to embark on a journey of personal and professional excellence. So this is the time we're going to translate our understanding, all this knowledge we've gotten, into strategies for concrete action, right? Step one, take immediate action. The first step in breaking free from mediocrity is to take immediate action. Immediate action, not tomorrow, next, not next tomorrow, not in 10 minutes, now. Commit to implementing these strategies discussed in these trainings right away. Commit to that. Remember, I already gave you guys some um, stuff to do. Do them right after the meeting, do them, right? 
Start small and gradually build momentum. Remember that the journey to excellence is a continuous process and every small step counts. So every time you do something that, that makes you feel happy, that you've done right, congratulate yourself. Clap for yourself. When you finish writing those negative ones, ask you to write, and you've done it, read it, you know, burn it, clap for yourself. Then bring out the paper and do the other one. Please don't do only that old, the negative one and leave it. You are going to destroy yourself. When you do that negative one, burn it, and then do the positive one that will remain in your book. Second step, personal accountability and commitment to change. Personal accountability is key to overcoming mediocrity because it is you being accountable to yourself. Nobody will come and be accountable on your behalf for you. So take full responsibilities for your actions, take full responsibilities for your choices, take full responsibilities for the outcomes. Your actions, your choices, your outcomes. Take full responsibility. Recognize that you have the power to change your circumstances and strive for excellence. It is in your hand. So make a firm commitment to embrace growth. Push your limits and consistently pursue improvements. Make that commitment to embrace growth, to push your limits. No matter how things are difficult, continue to strive, pursue improvements, push your limits. You see, only people who push their limits, who test their limits over and over again, get successful. I tell you, I was talking to some of my people the other day and I was telling them, you see, if you want to produce more results, push your limits in this business. Go all out. Go all out. Go all out. If you have been inviting 10 people to a meeting, increase it to 50 people. Don't stop until you do 50. Don't demand less of yourself. Be accountable to yourself. Now, how do you hold yourself accountable? There are ways to hold yourself accountable, right? On your journey to excellence. So you want to set specific goals and track your progress. Set goals and track your progress. What do you need to track your progress? One of the most important things you need to track your progress is your diary. Use that to monitor your actions, monitor yourself. Go to your diary, write things down. When you give yourself a target, write the dates or the, the time. Now, what I normally do sometimes, I write something I want, and then between that time, I continually write about it. So if I want to do something by September, by June, I will write about it on a date in my diary. By, by the end of June, I'll write. Beginning of July, I'll write. End of July, I'll write. August, I'll write. So I'm seeing it, and I know how I'm going. Track your milestones. Create a system of rewards and consequences to motivate yourself and reinforce positive habits. I remember when I was sharing questionnaires and um, I told my wife that any day I don't bring back 30 questionnaires, I will not eat that day at home. And I told her, hold me accountable. And she was holding me accountable and I was doing it. But I now developed a bad habit at the time that messed everything up. That's why you must hold yourself accountable. I now got to a point where at times I don't do it and I knew I was very hungry, I will eat outside if I come back home. And that single action messed what I was doing up. Because I didn't hold myself accountable. Like it was a negative result for me. But when I was, she was there doing it and I was keeping to my own side of the bargain, I was producing results. So you want to do that. Find ways to hold yourself accountable. Ambassador Mike said he sleeps on the ground. When he, don't achieve, he does not achieve his results, he sleeps on the ground. He doesn't sleep on the bed. There's somebody that, there are some people that say, you know what, if I don't achieve my results, then I won't eat the next two meals. So hold yourself accountable. And then when you hit the result, reward yourself. Reward yourself. A plate of unkobi can really go a long way. Right? Sit down and devote a plate of unkobi for achieving your goals for the week. Okay, this week I'm going to recruit 10 people. Or, right? And you recruit 10 people, you take yourself out. You give yourself a treat. Find a way to reward yourself. Breaking free from mediocrity number four, six support systems. What is this one all about? What does it mean when we say six support system? We're not asking you to go and see a shrink. We're saying you surround yourself with a support system that encourages growth and holds you accountable. You are the average of the five closest people to you. Be careful around about who is around you. Find an accountability partner, mentor, or a coach who can provide guidance, motivation, and a constructive feedback to you. Are we listening? You're the average of the five closest people to you. If the five closest people to you are dons, you will be dons number six. If the five closest people to you are smokers, you will be smokers number six. If the five closest people to you are mediocres, you will be mediocre number six. Find a way to be around high performers. If you don't have them in your circle of influence, start reading their books, watching their videos continuously, and separate yourself from those people who are not providing results that you want in your life. 
if one of those people is your spouse, if you're married, and one of those who talk who, who are mediocre is your spouse, I'm not saying chase her away or chasing away. I'm only remind you that one position is taken out of the five. Choose the next four carefully. You can actually control the next four. Choose them carefully. Collaborate with like-minded individuals who are also striving for excellence. That is why we tell you to join us. In Latin, they say, "Ecce quam bonum delectum habitare fratres in unum." Ecce quam bonum delectum habitare fratres in unum. It's a Latin phrase that said, "How good, how delightful it is for brothers to live together as one." When you walk with a team of like-minded people. When you work with a team of like-minded people who are striving for excellence, guess what is going to happen? You will begin to produce more results because you are working with these people. You guys are knife sharpened knife. The Bible says it that knife sharpened knife. How many of us are going to see these people doing um, um, suya, aboki guys, when they cut, where they, where they cut suya? Or where they cut cows, cow meat, carry their two knives and they sharpen themselves, sharpen each on each other fast and swap. They cut the thing. You want to win. You want to succeed, right? You want to win. You want to succeed. So don't play small. Be careful who is in your company. Lions don't hunt with lions, with with tiger with dogs. Lions hunt with lions. Tigers hunt with tigers. Who are you hunting with? Who is your co-hunter? Who is your co-hunter? You want to be you want to know what that, that, that. who is your co-hunter? Do you have a co-hunter that is capable when something goes wrong in the forest? Or are you hunting with somebody that when something goes wrong in the forest, the person abandons you? Do you have colleagues who can fight like you? Or are you going with or are you the king in the kingdom, the one-eyed king in the kingdom of the blind? Right? So engage in discussions and share experiences to inspire and learn from others. It's very important if you want to win, right? Very, very important. So let's just look at some reflections on this, right? Let's look at some reflections. Remember, breaking free from mediocrity requires perseverance and commitment. It is not always easy, but the rewards are immense. As you take action and hold yourself accountable, you will witness positive changes in your personal and professional life, right? So before we conclude, I encourage you to reflect on your commitment to change and the steps you will take to break free from mediocrity. Write down your action plan and set realistic timelines for your goals. Very, very important, right? Set realistic timelines to achieve your goals. If you do this, a lot will go well for you, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to go through some action steps quickly some action step that will help us, right? So you're going to take this knowledge, you're going to apply them in your personal life and your professional life, right? Take the knowledge you've given you, these are action steps now, apply them in your personal life, in your professional life. Challenge yourself, challenge yourself. Set meaningful goals. Step out of your comfort zone. Hold yourself accountable, right? Challenge yourself, set meaningful goals. Step out of your comfort zone. Hold yourself accountable. Believe in your ability to create positive change and embrace the journey towards excellence. Very important, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I have full confidence that you have the potential to overcome mediocrity and achieve greatness. Your commitment and determination will set you apart. Embrace the challenge, take actions, and unlock your full potentials, right? So, gentlemen, I've just shown you how you can unlock your potentials. You've seen the cost of mediocrity and we'll show you how you can unlock your full potentials. It is up to you to make it happen. Nobody will come and do it for you. You will do it for yourself, right? So I want us to take the lessons we've learned today. Let us go out and let us create that success that we truly, truly desire. Nobody pays you as a mediocre. Nobody pays a mediocre. Nobody, even God hates mediocrity. That's why God says, if you are neither hot nor cold in my mouth, I will spill you out. Even God wants to know where you stand. Are you good? If you are good, he makes you better. If you are not good, he trains you to become good. But if you are just there, he doesn't know what your ambitions are. 
right? So let us decide today to not be a mediocre, to go to the chat room and write down and type this down. Today, I decide to become a champion and I reject mediocrity. Today, I decide to become a champion and I reject mediocrity. Today, I decide to become a champion and I reject mediocrity. No champion goes out to battle expecting not to win. That's why Nigeria has never won the World Cup. And until we decide to change it, we cannot win the World Cup. You find Nigeria going for the World Cup and they tell them, your target is to qualify for the second round. What? Your target is go and qualify for the second round. What? What prize do they give to those who qualify for the second round? Those who are going there to win the World Cup, are they not going to pass through the same second round? And we go and we don't even come out from the group stages because we're planning like mediocres. When you plan and work like the champion, you end up a champion, non-negotiable. Champions don't negotiate it. They don't negotiate it. They go all out to win. Now, if in the course of winning something goes wrong, they pick, they make correction and they continue. But when your target is to go halfway, it's like you want to fly from Nigeria to, to, um, to, to the United, United Kingdom and you enter the aircraft and the pilot says, you know what? We are mediocres and we're going to just put um, um, the fuel we're going to use. It's not going to be the full tank of fuel. We're just going to put a um, half tank of fuel and see what it's going to be. However, we, we, wherever we get, we thank God. And he takes off with half tank of fuel and he's flying. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot speaking. Um, I just want to let you know that today we are flying to London and as mediocres, we only have half tank of fuel. And then wherever we get to, that's fine. We, we, we get there, we, whatever happens, it's okay. What will you do? Some of you start kabashing. You start kabashing. You tell him, stop at the nearest airport, go and put fuel. And this is what happens because a lot of people are mediocre in their life, in their business. Remember, there's a video I did. All skills are learnable. Learn the skills. Don't sit down and hope and wish and fold your hands and expecting success to come your way. Don't cry for the money you did not make in this business from the business you did not do. Don't cry for the money you did not make from the business you did not do. And this is what happens to so many people. You are crying. I'm not making money in my business. My business is not working. Your business will never work. It's not a cost. It's a reality. The deep business is not working for me. It will never work for you. Newsflash. Newsflash. Your business will never work. My business never works for me. It has never worked for me. Until the end of this world, my business will never work for me. If you think I'm costing myself, you're on your own. She is my own business. I work my business. My business does not work for me. When you sit down, fold your hands, and you want your business to work for you, it shows how lazy you are. It shows the lack of understanding. Your business cannot work for you. It is inanimate. You are the one to work your business. And you only get paid in our industry for productivity. You don't get paid for being a name in the company's computer. Many of you are just a name in the company's computer. And you want them to pay you for what? For just being a name? No. Nobody pays you for being a name. You don't need to like what I'm saying. But that's the simple truth. You don't need to like me. That is the simple truth. Right? That's the simple truth. It's called network marketing. It is not called not work marketing. It's not called don't work marketing. It's not called net sleep marketing. There is a work component that must be done. If you don't know how to do the work component, learn it. Learn it. And we have made it so simple. We have produced what is called the standard methods of operation. A five weeks program. We take you through to build your business. We have even gone further to even have the five weeks program run in the night by 8 p.m. Each week program run, runs for two, ses two sessions a week. We have the cost one, cost two of each session. And we are doing it. And it's continuous. So that as people come, they are fed into the appropriate week and we work with them. They learn what needs to do, what they need to do. They do their activities for the week. They learn it. By the end of week one, they are now qualified to start attending our cell meetings. You start attending our cell meetings after you are done with your week one activity. Then we now work with them for the remaining four weeks to produce King's Men among them. Everything is set. But you are the one to feed yourself into the system. 
We would come to your house and drag you and put you inside IPO, put you inside cell meeting. No. We will not load your phone to come and enter cell meeting. No. We say, I don't have data. I don't have data. Don't have data. That is fine. That is fine. The Bible says the poor you will always have in your midst. If you are the one the Bible is talking about, it's not me. I'm doing something about it. And I know God will bless the works of my hands. The Bible says, I will bless the works of your hands. It didn't say, I will bless the thoughts of your head. It didn't say, I will bless the wishes you have. It didn't say, I will bless your desires. I will bless the works of your hands. When you approach the throne of God to bless, what is in your hand? What are you asking God to bless? You come empty-handed. And he says, see me, take me, bless me. What am I blessing? What will God bless? When God created you, he said, I am making you in my own image and likeness. He made you to be like him. Go into the whole world, dominate, fill the earth, subdue it. He has given you a mandate. You have done nothing with the mandate and you come back to him and say, bless, bless waiting. If you were God, will you bless yourself? Ask yourself that question. If you were God, Will you reward yourself based on the actions you are taking today? Okay, let's never say if you are God. If you are an employer, if you are an employer and you employ somebody to come and do this business, if you are the owner of M Global and you employ somebody to do this business, how much will you pay the person in a month? If the person does what you are doing, go to the chat room, type your answer inside. Sincerity is the name of the game. Everybody type your answer. If Look at what you did in this business last month. If you were the owner of M Global and you have to pay yourself for the activity you did in April, type how much you will pay yourself. Let us see. Type how much you will pay yourself. If you are the owner of the company and you have to pay yourself for the activity you did in April in this business, the productive activity, type how much you will pay yourself. Type it down. 500K. Isaac. Isaac, do you want me and you to sit down and digest this thing? No payments. 50K. 10K. 50K, nothing. 70K, Abdullah Abbas, 70K. But, but type it, look at it. Look at the figures, 80K. Yes, we know you will be paid based on your performance. How much is your performance worth? Um, um, or Gabo, let me not mute you, or Gabo, Steven. How much was your performance worth? What is the worth of your performance? 10K, 2K, 30K, 50K. All of you say 50K, 50K, 50K. By then I unmute you now. And I ask you, tell me about your business. You will see that you are not even going to earn one naira. In fact, you should be apologizing to the company. Let me tell you, if I don't even know you, right? If I don't know you, you're not supposed to earn anything. Because if you are doing the activity, I will see you in my DTC. I see every activity. Somebody say one million, Harun Nahu, Ahmed, Amin. Ah, say back up. It's not the one million naira. We'll give you the whole company. <laughs> we'll give you the whole company. It's not the one million naira. Come and take the whole company. So tell yourself the truth. For, you see, when some, somebody who says one million naira, the truth is that you know you know you did nothing. And you cannot get, I, I doubt you can go far with that kind of mindset because you're not even being truthful to yourself. You're not being truthful to yourself. I told you at the beginning, I said sincerity is the name of the game. If you don't have anything to say, keep quiet and absorb it and let it sink in. 5K for at least present at work. Kenny Maggie, this one I will unmute you. Kenny Maggie, unmute yourself. The reason I want to unmute you is because I need to give you an advice. But unmute, Kenny, unmute. No hard feelings. Trust me. I want to Kenny, Kenny, how are you? Fine. Ah, Kenny, this Kenny is a female. I was thinking it's a male. How are you doing? I'm okay, sir. Okay, Maggie is the name. Okay, okay. So Kenny might be son name, something like that. All right, for showing up, for present, for being present at work, right? 5K. Can you explain what you mean by that? We attended the work. You what? To attend to work, to, to come to workplace. To come to the workplace? Yes. Okay, can you explain to me, Kenny, why do they pay you? What do you do? What do you do, Kenny? What do you do? I teach. You teach? I teach, yes. Okay. Why do you go to that, or that school? Why do you teach? Why do they pay you? Right? To have an impact, uh, to change the lives of the people and teach. That is why they pay you, right? Yes. Okay. Um, impart knowledge to the people. Impart knowledge, that's why right. you are paid. Yes. Yes. You are paid to impart knowledge. Is that what is that? In your employment letter, they, you, you are paid to teach. Are you paid to show up? No. If you come to that school every day and you don't teach, 
You don't teach anybody. You come to the school every day, every day, every day, every day. How much will they pay at the end of the month? Uh, nothing. So why do you want 5,000 naira for showing up? You know, sometimes you, you work and you continue working and the work will not, at least, you will not be able to get you put on, you put in your effort and your stress and some things in some weeks and you will not be able to achieve the, the goal you have by your continual hard working and doing what they ask you to do, then you may, you may be considered for that. You may be considered for that. Um, Maggie, hear me out. What you have, and I want everybody to listen carefully, that mindset, you have to change it. That is the recipe that is, that is actually making you be where you are today. Nobody pays you for showing up. If I want people to show up in my office and give them 5,000 Naira, I can actually go outside and use microphone and announce. I want people to gather in my office, I'll give them 2,000 Naira. Trust me, my office will be filled up. Nobody pays you to show up, Maggie. They will even fire you before that 5,000 naira is even, is even, before you even start talking about 5,000 naira at the end of the month. They will fire you and you will go with nothing. People pay you to produce results and not for showing up. People are paid for results, not for showing up, right? So if you have an office where you work and you just show up, you are casual anyhow, and then you're looking for salary. But it doesn't work that way. So Maggie, change that mindset. People are paid. The reason they gave you that job is to give them results. And not imagine you show up one month, you didn't do much, you're not collecting them one with five k and goes. They replace you with another person. The person comes in, does the same thing, five k and goes. The next person comes in. How will the company become productive? So you are not paid in our business for showing up. You are paid for producing results. You are paid for growing a network of people who buy products monthly, people who do their business every month. That is why you are paid. So don't get it twisted, right? So you are employed in our business to connect people to the business. If people are not connecting to your business, you are not in business. Nothing more, nothing less. Wake up and smell the coffee.